Hi, it's Dan Kaufman for Beer City Television, and I am thirsty. So it's a good thing we're here in Portland, Oregon for the North American Organic Brewers Festival. I'm ready for a beer. Let's go see if this brewers will uh, maybe give us some free ones or something. Come on, check it out. I'm with Brian and Rebecca of Crono Gales. And uh, are you the, who's the beer master here? Well, I'm the one who's trained to do it, but uh, she helps me out equally, so I can't really do a brew day without Rebecca. So you work together? Yes, we do, yep. Tell us a little bit about the day, your day. Um, well, it all changes because we have a, not only a brewery, but a farm as well. So we tend our own hops as well as uh, brew a beer. So we have uh, two to three days uh, brew days a week. And, uh, and it's all very organic. You make, uh, so you make your own hops for all your ales or do you bring some in? Well actually, um, it's interesting, when we first started we uh, used uh, New Zealand hops because that was the only game in town uh, for organic, uh, certified organic hops. And, and then we planted out our own hop field. And so this year actually we're uh, switching, switching mostly over to uh, most of our own hops and if they aren't our own hops, they're, they're made locally. So we don't want to have long distance hops. And where are you located at? Tell us a little bit about about more about you know how the location uh, influences what you do. It influences it hugely. Actually, we're in Sorrento, British Columbia, which is in the north part of the Okanagan, on a beautiful lake called Shuswap Lake. Um, it's a very temperate climate. So, and on the farm, we're having all kinds of animals. We've got pigs and chickens and sheep as well as of course the big hops and a uh, large garden that feeds ourselves as well as providing things like cherries and raspberries and rhubarb for the beers. Um, and it influences what we're doing in, in large part the, the farm is actually critical to the brewery because the brewery is right smack in the middle of the 10 acre farm. So it, it uh, influences both the size of the brewery because we don't want to have too big a footprint on the farm, but of course we're also growing all of the ingredients for the brewery and everything that comes out of the brewery is also reused on the farm itself. So we're completely zero waste. So you're really taking this one step further than just organic beer. Yeah, it was never a marketing idea for us, it was a principle. Now is this something that we can find down here in the States or uh, is, this a, is this a hard find? Well, you can't find our beer made from our brewery anywhere except at the North American Organic Brewers Festival. Excellent. I... <laughs> we don't export outside of BC. I can't wait to try um, it too. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> We're distributed all through the lower part of BC, um, but we are BC only and draft only. So other than that, you get to uh, go out and try what other people are brewing by way of organic beer. About how many barrels, or what is it in Canada, hectoliters? Or... We use all method of uh, <laughs> all methods of uh, measurement we because about forty six thousand hats a year. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's, and it, it varies a fair bit. I mean, we vary from summer to winter, but in uh, in terms of hectoliters, we're brewing about seven hundred hectoliters a year. Well, it's great talking to you. I can't wait to try the beers. Yeah, we just tried both of the drinks here at Creenog Ales and tried the stout first. Excellent. It was a very good stout. And uh, now I've had the bite Beyond the Pale Ale. Also very good, uh, very creamy uh, taste. I think I like the stout a little bit better. And the man behind the camera uh, says he likes the ale. So, you know, it's all about taste. And what tastes good to you? Hi, I'm here with Ted Vivitson of Eel River Brewing Company, and I hear you are the first uh, the first organic brewer, is that true? Yeah, we're uh, America's first certified organic brewery. Uh, we've been doing this for uh, going on uh, almost 15 years, uh, down in Humboldt County. What what, uh, what got you going in that direction? Did you always do it, or what was the impetus? Um, honestly, it was uh, one of our patrons came in, and uh, he's an older guy, and he said, make me a naked beer. And I was asking him what, what he meant, and he goes, uh, I don't want any of the pesticides, any of the synthetic fertilizers. He goes, I don't want any BS. He goes, I want, I want one of the beers like my great granddad used to drink, and he's an old guy. So anyway, I thought that was that was pretty intriguing at that time, and I go, yeah, okay, yeah, we can do that. And uh, from there, it was history. That's where our, our slogan, uh, Be Natural, Drink Naked, comes from. What year was that about? I was 94. So you've been, uh, you've been brewing... Uh, how long, when did you start brewing yourself? I've been doing this uh, since uh, 76 when Jimmy Carter said it was okay. Very nice, and his brother too, of course. Oh, Billy yeah. is, a, is an icon. He's an inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about what you're serving today. Uh, we have our, our acai uh, wheat, which is a crystal wheat, and we use uh, pomegranate and uh, acai. 
with the beer and uh, uh, nine other different berries and uh, also our IPA. Humboldt County is, is, is a well-known, it's a beautiful country, of course, very well-known for some other things that are like, like hops. Like beer. <laughs> <laughs> like beer and uh, other things. Uh, yes, we are known for uh, love of agriculture, let's put it that way. To answer the next question, yes, we are an indoor brewery <laughs> versus an outdoor brewery. <laughs> well, we got to go out and try some some of your some of your drinks here, oh, you and we'd love to uh, do that. And it's great to have you up here in Portland, Oregon. Hey, I love it. Well, let's try the acai wheat. Yes, you know, I'm not usually one for the berry flavored, but it's just it's just the nicest little touch on the front end. I like that. We're here with Fred Eckhart. He's known as the godfather of uh, Portland uh, beer and brewing. Fred, how did, how did you get that title? Well, a long time ago, what would have been 1969, I wrote a book on home brewing because the home brew at that time was left over from prohibition and it was really pathetic worse than Budweiser is today, for example. And uh, you, had, you had really lousy beer. Nobody knew how to make good beer. And uh, I had finally discovered that you can actually make good beer at home. So I wrote a small booklet on the subject. And then a lot of people started doing other things like building small breweries. And first thing you know, we had a brewing culture going here in Portland. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> now, you know, my grandfather talked about that during brew during Prohibition, brewing beer, uh, even, even said bathtub beer. My, my father's stuff was de de deplorable, <laughs> but it got me through college. <laughs> it got people through Prohibition, I guess. Two cents a quart it cost him during, when I was in college, but it was one cent a quart during Prohibition. But you know, if we knew, if, if the homebrewers knew hey, then man, what we know now, it, what we know now about brewing beer and the ingredients were available, Prohibition wouldn't work today. It's just everybody on the planet can get good ingredients and make good beer at home if they want to. We cannot. Prohibition won't work. Thank God for small favors. And what about this next step in the evolution? It seems it hasn't been too long since people have been putting together organic beers. What do you think about that? Beautiful idea. And the, you, you what, who brought that? Who brought the first organic beer into this country? Charles Finkel, Pike Brewing up in Seattle. He was uh, a uh, merchant of inn. He never gets credit for that. They brought in a Schneider Schneider beer from Germany, and uh, that's that was the very first organic beer. Actually, I started writing a column for the Oregonian, uh, and the Oregonian published all this different information on different kinds of beer, and you had a, 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 a brewers, new brewers coming in, and an educated group of people who knew which kind of beer to look for and which kind of beer they might like. So you had, you had a, a group of people who had some knowledge and you had brewers who were, who were trying to satisfy that need. And that's really what did it. And it was not me, it was the Oregonian publishing um, regular pieces on, on what kind of beer and, and different kinds of brewing. Well, then there was a law change too, right? Back in the Yes, there was. That was, 80s that's what really made it work. That's what really made it work. Some of the brewers got together and a, with a winemaker, and, a, and a, the McMinniman's father was a lawyer, <laughs> and they had they had this wonderful uh, uh, rapport with the with the state legislature, and they made a, a law that if you're a small brewery, brewing less than 10,000 barrels a year, that'd be 310,000 gallons. If you're brewing that less than that a year, that you can do your own distributing. Uh, until then. It, you, every brewer, in fact, still, every brewer is required to have a distributor. You can't just go distribute your own beer. But they made that exception for small brewers. Oh, the natives are getting restless. And that's about all the time we have today for Beer City TV. I'm going to take a few moments to enjoy this band and have another beer.
right, so we are going to try the acai wheat berry. Acai. So, here we are. Acai. I thought at first it was the acai berry, but it's actually the acai berry. And that is a berry that the bears in Humboldt love to eat. <laughs> I don't think it grows in Humboldt. <laughs> Brazil. Okay, we'll do it again. Acai berry. And uh, it is a favorite berry of... Um, one more time. One important thing that a brewer must know is how to pronounce the words correctly. It's not acai berry, it's acai berry. And, uh, and, and that makes all the difference in how it tastes. 